Mission Joker One. We're coming at you from the alleyways in the Mission. You know, about to let you know how it goes down, how we get these walls, how we paint these walls, how we decide who's gonna paint these walls. We got certain people uh, keeping up the alleys, looking out for it, making sure there's no weak stuff that goes up or stays up, making sure that when there's something ugly, it gets gone over. Somebody better comes over, you know, trying to maintain the quality and the level of art we have out here. So right now, uh, we're in Cypress Alley, a little alleyway uh, near 24th and Mission. And uh, this alley has just been added to the Lilac Alley mural project, which uh, started in the uh, Lilac Alley a few blocks over. Um, first moved over to the other side of Mission on Osage. And then now... Uh, the curator, Randolph Bowes, he uh, talked to as many of the property owners and residents here as he could to have this alleyway added to the mural project. So um, the mural project is, uh, the Lilac Alley mural project is basically like a living, breathing, constantly evolving uh, public art gallery is the best way to describe it. And we have all kinds of artists, mostly graffiti artists, homegrown in San Francisco. Um, who regulate the walls, but um, all kinds of artists from all over the world that actually come to San Francisco, and uh, this is where they come to paint. And we do it for the community, you know, uh, for a lot of us, graffiti saved our lives. Um, back in the days when it was a choice between, you know, uh, being in gangs or selling drugs or uh, doing graffiti, and those of us that were lucky enough to get hooked on graffiti, uh, now years later are, um, you know, doing art, uh, public works of art for our communities and, and uh, for the families and the residents and everybody who's out here uh, so they don't have to see the little toy ass taggers everywhere, you know. Taggers, keep to certain spots, but don't tag on people's personal property, you know. Um, so that's why we come out here um, to add a little color to the streets. This dude, Pango was doing pieces on these walls in this same alley before there was such a thing as graffiti in you know, the way you think of it now. I'm talking early 80s, 83, I think 82, 83, something like that. Like before New York graffiti on trains became a fad uh, that spread to the West Coast. They were like doing cholo pieces back in the day. So it's always an honor to uh, paint next to my man Pango. We got Mace, uh, another San Francisco OG, who's recently come out in the last couple of years to paint. It, it's like, I don't know, some, some weird like thing going on in the universe where all this whole generation of people are, are being like pulled back towards street art as it has like another resurgence. It's kind of like a modern day renaissance in a way is the way I look at it. Like all these old dudes, and I'm one of them, that uh, came up, you know, the 80s babies that were um, in middle school and high school in the 80s, 90s. Uh, coming up on three years and since then I've managed to, you know, uh, reestablish myself in the graffiti game, you know, started out bombing. Uh, I didn't go straight to piecing because, you know, in this game you gotta, you gotta earn your walls, you know what I mean? You really gotta pay your dues. Really, I just do these pieces so I can justify my bombing when I go out, because at my age, as a bomber, it's just not a good look, you know? Uh, like, we like to play up the art, and there's definitely a benefit to that. Uh, I just don't really consider myself an artist, but I guess I am one. <laughs> I've been putting art in the streets now for about two years straight, and uh, getting a lot of uh, positive response from that, and uh, have a whole following of young people that, uh, that, I, that I try to, you know, help to mentor uh, as much as I can, uh, to, you know, follow their dreams through art. Uh, 